H has the Apple of Eden, so I assume the war will begin as soon as he can take over. We'll let him have his fun. Lord knows that kind of purge will be good for Europe. And then end it with a bang, as planned. Out of the chaos of war, a new order will emerge. Hello, and welcome to Visions of the Past. My name is Andrew, and I'm the host of this Assassin's Creed lore podcast. This is episode 30, and today we're going to talk about the group that Henry Ford was in when he penned this letter, the American Rite of the Templar Order. The first thing that must be discussed when talking about the American Rite of the Templar Order is to establish the area and time in which they operated. Today, we're going to talk about the Templar activities in North America, predominantly within the United States, after the American Revolutionary War. Now that we have an idea of exactly where we are talking about, we can now look at where we find the information on the activities of the American Rite of the Templar Order. They were first introduced in the glyphs of Assassin's Creed II, and we would get more information within the multiplayer of Assassin's Creed Revelations, the Facebook game Assassin's Creed Project Legacy, the novel Assassin's Creed Last Descendants, and the comics Assassin's Creed The Fall, Assassin's Creed The Chain, Assassin's Creed Last Descendants Lotus, and Assassin's Creed Templars. After the end of the American Revolution in 1783, it's unknown who all were Templars in North America, but it is known that in August 1785, then Governor of Connecticut, Jonathan Trumbull, was assassinated after the assassins had found out about his alignment with the Templar Order. By 1788, the colonial right had been officially reorganized into the American right of the Templar Order, and seemingly had been contacted by Francois Thomas Germain about overthrowing the de la Serre family. But this contact would be countered in 1794 by Frederick Wetherall, asking them to support the de la Serres against Germain and his extremist faction. The Americans would send no support, only sympathies, as the Parisian right was running smoothly in their eyes. And sometime before 1805, the inner sanctum of the Templar Order presumed that the Black Cross, Travis Euler, died during his investigation of the Kuinur and would pass the title of Black Cross to the American Templar Solomon Bolden. In 1805, Bolden would pose as a slaver and would travel to Libya, finding that Euler was in fact imprisoned in Tripoli and would meet with Jan van der Graaff, who was searching for the Kuinur for Napoleon. While trying to free Ollier, Bolden would be stabbed in the back and would have Van der Graaff take his place as the Black Cross, and by 1808, Van der Graaff had traveled to America with the Cui Noir and told Bolden's wife of his fate. This time would also see the Templars of New York struggle to maintain control of the city, but one Templar, Crudgel Cormac, would rise as an assassin hunter after being trained by his grandfather Shea. In the early 1860s, the American Templar Order was under the control of Grand Master William M. Tweed. Tweed was the boss of Tamaray Hall, through which he would control the Democratic Party, and through them he would directly influence the Confederate States of America with the goal of reclaiming power by creating chaos in the American political climate at the time. Tweed would orchestrate the New York City draft riots by having Templars in place to control the police and army and then would have Crudgel Cormac in place to influence the New York gangs to instigate the chaos and mayhem. Tweed knew that the riot would eventually turn against the black citizens of New York, and even though he was opposed to racial segregation, he deemed it a necessary evil to reach the Templars' goals. He would also have Charles W. Sanford hinder the efforts to stop the rioters by holding back the state militia under his command. Crudgel, on the other hand, would decide to save children of a black orphanage after it was set ablaze by rioters. When Tweed found out that the Assassin Brotherhood was intending to locate a Dagger of Eden, he would send Crudgel to intercept them and acquire the artifact. Crudgel would fail, being stopped by the Assassin Varius and Tweed's maid Eliza. The dagger would end up in the hands of Ulysses S. Grant, who would use it to turn the tide of the American Civil War in favor of the Union. After the fall of the Confederacy in April 1865, Templars would order John Wilkes Booth to kill the American president, Abraham Lincoln. He would be successful, but would also see himself assassinated less than two weeks after he assassinated Lincoln. 
After Grant was elected president in 1868, Templars would infiltrate his administration, helping him master the powers of the dagger by granting him access to an Isu box and manuscript. In 1871, Tweed would be arrested, though he would be out on bail. By 1872, the American Templar Alice was tasked to recover the Isu box and manuscript that was stolen from President Grant. She would eventually recover the box in New York City, but failed to eliminate the man who took it. She would then follow word of a few manuscript pages being held in the British Museum. She would get her hands on these pages, but on her way back to the States, she was confronted by Pinkerton agent Tommy Grayling. Not wanting the pages to fall into the hands of the assassins, she would throw them into the sea. But she would end up jumping overboard after them, but before doing so would tell Tommy Grayling that his actions would not go unnoticed by the Templars. In the early 20th century, the Templars would use capitalism as a means to keep the working population in line and under tight control. Templars Henry Ford and Ransom Olds created the assembly line, and John Maynard Keyes would form several new theories and economic forms based on capitalism. During this time, Harvey Firestone and Thomas Edison would also be key members of the American right of the Templar order. At this time, the Templars' main goals would be to spread capitalism throughout the world and cause the collapse of the democracy. That way, they could create the ideal situation to introduce their new world order. It would also be around this time that Nikola Tesla, a former employee of Edison's, would be in the possession of an apple of Eden, which he intended to use to create a free information network across the world. The Templars would see this as a serious impediment to their goals, which would lead Edison to demonstrate Tesla's alternating current of electricity in a series of experiments that would include the electrocution of a circus elephant. This video would be released as proof of Tesla's power being dangerous, causing disapproval within the public. J.P. Morgan, another American Templar, would cut funding for Tesla's Ordenclef Tower after seeing this video as well. This would lead to Tesla's credibility to falter, allowing Edison to rise back into prominence. In November of 1910, a secret meeting on Jekyll Island that would see Templars Frank Vanderlip, Paul Warburg, Charles Norton, Benjamin Strong Jr., Henry Pomeroy Davison, and Nelson Aldrich create what they called the plan as a way to control the capitalist market. The first part of the plan, the American Federal Reserve, would be established in December 1913. February 5, 1918, Ford announced that his company would pay his workers $5 a day. However, this raise turned out to be a pay cut, and he had used the Apple of Eden that the Templars had stolen from Tesla to convince his workers of the raise. Sometime after World War I, Albert Bolden joined the Templars and would become the Black Cross of his era, while he posed as the leading trumpeter in the jazz group Albie Bolden and the Harlem Hot Steppers. In 1933, Ford had shipped the Apple of Eden to Adolf Hitler, who would use it to rise as leader of Nazi Germany and lay the groundwork for World War II. During the war, the Templars would use then-President Franklin D. Roosevelt as a secret puppet. In 1937, the Templars would establish Abstergo Industries as a front for their activities. The company would allow the Templars to accumulate wealth and accelerate scientific process while staying largely anonymous. By 1943, the Templars had lost control of their political puppets, including President Roosevelt. This would lead the Inner Sanctum to have an atomic weapon developed to give victory to the Americans. John Van Neumann, a Templar physicist, would propose a more peaceful solution that he had called the Rainbow Project. He believed that using his theories on Diglake, that he could use the machine to alter the course of history by killing Hitler before his rise to power. This would lead to a temporary alliance with assassin Boris Pass, where von Neumann would work with both Pass and Tesla on the USS Eldridge. This would eventually be a failure, and von Neumann would be moved to the Manhattan Project. By 1944, the Templars were prepared for the post-war era, and using the Bretton Woods Conference in July of 1944 as a cover for a meeting between their economic agents which would see a plan in place to spread capitalism across Europe. And after dropping the atomic bombs on Japan on August 6th and August 9th, 1945, 
The Templars would guide the world economies into the goals of their new world order. Following World War II, Harry Dester White, a Templar that was at the Bretton Woods Conference, would betray the order to warn the Soviet governments of the Templars' plans, and in 1948, the Templars would have him killed in his own home. During the 1950s, American Templars would see to the murder of Jack Parsons and would manipulate the CIA to interfere in multiple coups throughout the world. On February 8, 1957, while Van Neumann was in a medical center, he would be killed and his Apple of Eden stolen. In 1963, the Templars, through Abstergo, wanted to remove the American president John F. Kennedy as he did not serve their interests. Because of this, they sanctioned his assassination and had the intent to install his vice president, Lyndon B. Johnson, as their puppet president. Unbeknownst to the Templars, the assassins, under the leadership of Boris Pass, infiltrated their ranks in an attempt to hijack the conspiracy. An assassin by the name of Harvey would betray the assassins and then end up serving as a double agent for the Templars. After the Bloodstone unit killed Kennedy and framed the Templar shooter Lee Harvey Oswald, the assassin William Greer, a CIA agent that Abstergo trained for the mission with a separate apple so that he could bring them Kennedy's apple, this would pave the way for NASA to organize the Apollo 11 spaceflight to allow Templar Buzz Aldrin to retrieve an apple of Eden from the surface of the moon. In 1983, a young boy would be kidnapped and brought to an Abstergo facility in Philadelphia. Here, Warden Vidic would begin to experiment on him, calling him Subject 4 of the Animus Project. This subject eventually would be named Daniel Cross and would relive the memories of one of his ancestors. Vidic would use Vidic would use a replicated piece of Eden to embed Cross with an impulse to assassinate the assassin mentor, if the opportunity had ever presented itself. In the late 1990s, both the Templars and the Assassins would engage in a political war for the presidency of the United States. A war that the Templars would win, placing George W. Bush in office as their puppet. On November 6, 2000, Cross would be able to fulfill his impulse to kill the assassin mentor, and then, on November 21st, would make his way back to the Absurgo Research Facility in Philadelphia. After a session in the Animus, he would be administered SK-345 and subconsciously reveal locations and secrets of assassin hideouts that he had been at for the last two years, allowing the Templars to initiate the Great Purge that almost ended the Assassin Brotherhood. With the fall of the Assassins, the Templars would be able to steer the next presidential election to their favor. When the Supreme Court heard the case Bush v. Gore, Templar ally Justice Antonin Scalia would convince Justice Sandra Day O'Connor to swing the vote towards Bush. As the Templars continued eliminating assassins, they would manipulate the Bush administration in 2003 to start the Iraq War to give way for Vice President Dick Cheney's military contractors to accept jobs and escalate the war. This would let Templar influence spread and when O'Connor decided to resign from the Supreme Court in 2005, Salia would make sure that President Bush would be given the name of Templar John Roberts as her replacement. But with the death of Chief Justice William Rehnquist less than two months later, Bush would push Roberts into that position. And in 2010, the Roberts-led court would rule against limitations on corporate contributes to political campaigns. This decision would give Abstergo to ability to elect their chosen candidates into specific government positions. Sometime before October 2011, in an underground Abstergo facility beneath Denver International Airport, Daniel Cross would lead an experiment that involved the I Abstergo satellite. However, he would fall under the influence of the project's Apple of Eden and would kill everyone, including destroying the Apple of Eden. In 2012, in 2012, Cross would still be a high-ranking member of the Templar Order, tracking assassin Desmond Miles to an office building in Manhattan while he was trying to steal an ESU battery. Desmond would be able to disarm him and escape with the battery. In 2014, an unnamed Grandmaster was operating in the United States, as it was that year that Alan Ricken told Alevio Gramatica that if he wanted to proceed with his plan to excavate the observatory in Long Island Bay in Jamaica, he would have to contact him, along with the Grand Masters of Cuba and Mexico, to get a read on the area's status. In October 2016, Ricken's daughter, Sophia, staged the execution of Colum Lynch, 
so he could be brought to the Abstergo Foundation in Madrid, Spain. Looking at the history of the American Rite of the Templar Order, it seems to me that at every chance the Templars on the North American continent tried to use wars to build their new world order. Haytham tried with the Revolutionary War and the Colonial Templars. William Tweed would try with the Civil War, but it would be Ford and the Templars of the early 20th century that would finally figure out how to bring it about by using war to drive people to accepting a capitalist society. It was one of the few times where the Templars are shown playing at what someone would call a long game instead of a short one. They bided their time and slowly built resources and lightly nudged politics along, instead of doing things drastically, like starting wars or placing themselves directly into positions of government. The choices of who were actually Templars made a lot of sense to me too, choosing people that historically were either confirmed or seemed corrupt, or they had some shady ideals and were really ruthless people. While I would like to see the right expanded on up to the 20th century, it isn't something that I would be greatly sad not to get. What we have is great, and it gives a line to how the world got to where it is now. And there is one thing that is very interesting if we went back to the beginning of what is considered the American Rite of the Templar Order. We never really know where Shea Cormac fits into the hierarchy. All we really know is that he trained his grandson Crudgel and Crudgel's father. In theory, he was the highest ranking Templar of the colonial right when they fell and could either be master of the American right or grandmaster, depending on how he saw himself. We just don't know what he did after assassinating Charles Dorian in 1776. But that's not really part of the story that I need filled. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new episodes. If you love Visions of the Past podcast, I'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give a review on iTunes. If you have any questions about Assassin's Creed or topics that you would like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at visions underscore AC. You can find those links in the episode's show notes. Until next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed. And to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.